I take it this is on? Oh my God, I have to look at myself as well. They, they make that go away shortly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Go get your cupcake. It has your name on it. I'll wait for this. These your initials. Oh, so let's uh, call to order the oh. November 17th uh, Santa Clara Valley Habitat Agency Implementation Board meeting. We're in the City Hall, City Council Chambers in Morgan Hill. And uh, if we could have a roll call, please. Chair Lazat. Here. Oh, I thought you were just saying, here I am. <laughs> Board members Varela. Here. Herrera. Here. Wasserman. Here. Courtney. Here. Tucker. Here. Constantine. Here. Absolutely. I take it we have a quorum. Okay. Yes. Good. All right. Great, great, great. So the next, that's uh, items one and two. Next items, there's a report from the chair. That would be me. I have uh, really nothing to report. Um, I, other than uh, welcome everyone and um, we won't see you. Have a nice holiday in a, in a couple of weeks. So from there, I will go a report from the Public Advisory Commission, Walt Glynn's chair. He's not here. He's not here, so we'll pass over that. Uh, next item is a recognition of the end of term as governing implement, implementation board member Rose Herrera. Oh. So Rose. Uh, we have a little gift for you, Aww. but I'm going to let you open actually. Well, should I let her open it or should I? I'll let her open it. But we have a little gift for you yeah. in recognition of your service, not only to uh, this board, but also uh, to the city Overall. council and to the, all the other, all the other uh, uh, committees and commissions that you serve on. Thank you for your service for the eight years that you've been on council. I know what that's like as do a lot of us. Uh, so this is a small token of uh, everyone's appreciation. Thank so you. if you could pass that down and let's have a round of applause. <laughs> so I hope, uh, like me, you will do nothing for a couple of weeks and then uh, you'll find, weeks. yeah, a couple of weeks and then you'll uh, find something uh, uh, fun to do. <laughs> um, can, can I say something? Sure, absolutely. Walt's here now. Thank you very much. It's very, very sweet. And I told you last time was my la last meeting. So they find, they wrote a note on here. This is your last meeting, so I won't come wandering back here to bother you in the future. Um, oh, that's very nice. Thank you. So I just think everyone that ser has served on this board to bring it to life is, I think, you know, I just think it all everyone should be acknowledged for that because we uh, were the ones who uh, birthed this organization. And uh, it's been really fun working with you, uh, putting it together, um, hiring Edmund, you know, going through all the all the uh, the growing pains of this. And so, it's really exciting to see it get off the ground. And I've, it's been a real privilege working with all of you. And thank you for this. I appreciate it. You're welcome, and we wish you all the best. Mm -hmm. And on behalf of the governing board, we wish you the best, and thank you for your service as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next item is public comments, Nine, not, items not on the agenda. Members of the public may address the implementation board concerning any item not on this agenda and within the respective subject matter jurisdiction of the board. The length of public comments may be limited by the chair, uh, three minutes. Uh, with limited exceptions, the board is prohibited from discussing or taking action on any item not appearing on the posted agenda. I have no speaker cards, do we have? But we have someone waving at me. Would you like to say a few words, sir? Why don't you step? No. Why don't you step up to the podium? Uh, I'll ask you to Walt identify Weinstein. yourself. Oh, that's Walt. I'm sorry, Walt. Yes. You not a problem. Yeah. And uh, um, I'm from the Public Advisory Board. And looking at the agenda two nights ago, it was probably the most exciting. It was a slow night. Or it was an election <laughs> night. But the, the, we are moving forward. The agency is moving forward. These are projects that that. That, that are 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 real, and and so that is is what to me is, you know, so exciting to see that that um, you know we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, um, and the other thing is, um, with my public advisory hat on, the the high speed rail, it if it's not dead, then we need to think about um, wildlife corridors up on Pacheco Pass. Um, because that's going to be have a tremendous impact on wildlife, and I've had several people in the last couple of months talk to me about, you know, what's going on, and I don't think there's a whole bunch going on 
with wildlife corridors and the impact, and that's something that, that needs to be on the on the habitat agency's uh, um, dartboard out there. Madam Chair, may I thank you. Sure. make a comment? Thank you. Um, it's my intention, Walt, to hold a meeting that the high-speed rail attends and presents in South County in San Martin. If we can get all our ducks in a row, it'll be next month. Well, that, and, that would be great. And part of what they're doing will be to discuss the environmental impact reports that they have to do based on when they choose a route that comes from wherever it is in Gilroy, wherever it is in Morgan Hill, and wherever it comes through San Martin. And that environmental impact report, one of the things that they will be direct addressing is exactly what you said. Well, and as it comes over so, Pacheco Pass. I hear you. Uh, yeah. But yeah. just just know wherever it passes through, there's going to be an EIR. Good. Well, then I'll, yeah. I'll look for the, the notices Good. in the paper and uh, uh, in, in that. Good. You Thank it. you. Thank you for your comments. I, I wholeheartedly agree that we are finally, this is a very exciting meeting that we're going to get into. Is there any other member of the public that would like to say anything? Um, I would be remiss if I, um, as take the liberty to thank to uh, congratulate my colleague John Varela on his uh, re-election as well as Kat Tucker on her re-election uh, thank you chair the rest, Appreciate rest that. of us are safe <laughs> for now thank you So congratulations to both of you appreciate that yeah congratulations thank you. I'll also mention my my aide Roland as Roland, the yeah. newly elected mayor of Gilroy oh I'm sorry Roland that's right absolutely congratulations <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, any other members of the public wish to address us? All right, then we will move on to the uh, regular business of this August body. Item number one, San Felipe Creek Restoration Project Design Build Agreement with Habitat Restoration Sciences. Recommended action is to authorize the executive officer to execute phase one of a not to exceed $318,601 design build service agreement with Habitat Restoration Sciences, Inc. for the San Felipe Creek Restoration. Phase two construction, monitoring, and maintenance would be funded under a contract amendment at 65% design under a separate authorization as part of a guaranteed maximum price negotiation. And I'm going to turn this over to our executive director or yeah, other I, staff. Yes, other staff, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson Lazat. Uh, Tara Donovan is going to uh, present on this item. Welcome, Tara. Hello, I'm Tara Donovan. I'm the Principal Program Manager at the Habitat Agency. Are you new? Yes, I was hired in January. Oh, but have you have you presented to us before? I presented the uh, the annual oh. report. Okay. Well, then welcome again. Yeah, I've been I've been working on the habitat plan since uh, 2007 okay. with ICF, and I joined the Habitat Agency That's right. That's in right. uh, this year. That's right. Proceed, okay. please. So the the Habitat Agency is required to restore stream riparian and wetland habitats as part of its habitat plan permits and regional general permit in advance of covered project impacts. So in partnership with Santa Cruz Resource Conservation District and County Parks, we evaluated and identified 13 restoration opportunities within Joseph D. D. Grant County Park. Looking at the habitat plan's restoration goals and considering the advanced mitigation requirements, a stream and riparian restoration project along San Felipe Creek was selected. So this project provides an opportunity to tell the history of the park uh, while restoring the stream. San Felipe Creek runs through a historically farm valley and the reach is currently denuded of riparian ve vegetation as in, and is incised. A watershed approach will be taken to understand historic ecology, hydrology and geomorphic conditions, and the spatial and temporal distribution of water. Design elements will take into account natural springs, an alluvial fan, and remnant riparian vegetation composition. The Habitat Agency invited proposals from qualified design build teams based on a two-phase approach. So phase one was, is a feasibility study, design and permitting that would be contracted based on the submitted proposal. And then for phase two, at 65% design, the team would submit a guaranteed maximum price and the contract would be amended to include the detailed construction costs, project construction, and three years of management and monitoring. The re request for proposals was, was, 
<laughs> the request for proposals was released on September 13th to the eight pre-qualified firms from the Habitat Agency's uh, December 2015 list of design and restoration firms. Four of the eight firms attended the site walk and three proposals were, were received. However, one was disqualified as it arrived after the deadline. The proposals of the two qualified teams were reviewed and invited to interview on October 26 by a four-person panel. The, ha the Habitat Restoration Sciences Inc. team composed of Habitat Restoration Sciences, Balance Hydro Hydrologics, and Dudek was scored the highest, uh, was well reviewed by, reviewed by references, and recommended as the preferred team. So that brings us here today um, with, the rec with the recommended action before you. Any questions? Are there any questions by any of the board? Could I have a motion then? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to authorize the executive officer to execute a phase one uh, contract and not to exceed 318,610 design build service agreement with Habitat Restoration Sciences with the San Felipe Creek Restoration Project. Um, have a motion and a second. This is really exciting that we're starting this work. Well done. I really enjoyed, uh, I did read a lot of what they plan to do because I was astounded not only by the cost, how low it was. Me too. Even, and the next one, I'm just kidding <laughs> me. So anyway, I, I, I may have to talk to you about you know some some things. <laughs> Getting out the permits, that's amazing. So uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, I said aye as well. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Good work. Thank you. Are there any? I should have done this before. Was there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, the uh, motion and second uh, moves forward. Item number two is the Coyote Ridge Open Space Preserve Stock Ponds Remediation Restoration Project Agreement with Fall Creek Engineers. Recommended action, authorize the executive director to execute a phase one of an agreement with Fall Creek Engineering for services not to exceed $114,415 toward the design, permitting, and construction oversight activities associated with the Coyote Ridge Open Space Preserve Stock Ponds Restoration Project. Staff will return to us for approval of phase two consisting of the construction proposal upon completion of the preliminary design drawings. Hello. And we have Jerry Haas here, and Jerry is new. So Welcome, Jerry. If you want to maybe just give a little introduction sure. about yourself. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairperson and uh, members of the board. Uh, I'm a recent hire here. I'm not younger than Tara, but I'm newer to the agency than she is. Uh, I've been here for three months. I've been able to locate the refrigerator, so I feel like I'm fitting in just fine. You get your priorities straight. <laughs> it's critical. First critical. things first. That and parking. Uh, that, that and where you park. <laughs> The, uh, the work I've been doing the past couple of months has been um, processing applications, writing up memos, and doing work that otherwise would have been contracted and was being contracted out uh, for um, outsourcing uh, just before I started. So hopefully we'll see um, additional budget benefits from having in-house staff do some of this work. Um, but they gave me something fun to do too, and that's this project here, which is uh, very similar to the one that Tara just presented, and this is a second restoration project. This would be the third, I think, for the agency. Uh, and this would be a restoration project for two ponds. Um, they're up on the Coyote Ridge. Uh, Coyote Ridge, as you recall, was a, uh, the conservation easement was adopted by the governing board in September 2015, 1,800 acres up there on Coyote Ridge. There are two seasonal, well, I would say seasonal, but stock ponds that are up there that are kind of cut into uh, the drainage. Each of these ponds is about a quarter of an acre or less in size. Um, they're about 350 meters apart, and so I like to call it hopping distance. If, if we create habitat for red-legged frog, they may be able to hop to the next pond over there and create kind of a network. Um, both of these dams are now severely degraded over the years. They've had head cuts that have resulted in the dams being washed out and, and the channels below them being incised. There's a lot of erosion going on up there too. The, uh, as Tara mentioned, the Habitat Agency is required to restore uh, acreage of ponds and wetlands over the permit term, uh, 20 acres of each in total. Uh, Claro is the first project. Um, I 
think that we'll be completed with that pretty quickly here, another couple of weeks um, or so. <laughs> so that this week, hopefully, it's, we're, we're getting down to the wire here. Um, so this project would improve habitat for red-legged frog, California tiger salamander, and, uh, and western pond turtle as well, most likely. The project would just restore the two severely uh, eroded um, drainages below the ponds. Uh, it would also reduce sedimentation of the stream and improve the water quality above Anderson Reservoir. This is also a design-build contract. These are, uh, seem like a little bit better way to go. You get the plans worked along so far that you can actually develop construction drawings based on that. But then they're kind of malleable afterwards. You can make changes and adjustments to the plans as you need to. We did not prepare an RFP for this project. We selected a consultant that's on our preferred uh, consultant list. Uh, and I think that's primarily because the cost was low enough, I think. Uh, this is uh, phase one, as Terrace project was, design phase one, construction phase two. Uh, Fall Creek Engineering would be, the with the, would be the primary contractor for this phase. Uh, Go Native would be the construction contractor, and they would kind of, at, at the, the end of design, when the construction begins, they would flip roles, and uh, the contractor, would, the construction contractor would be the primary. The design costs will come from this year's budget, and the money left over and the cost center beyond the Keller Pond restoration is sufficient for that. The construction costs, when we do get a bid for that, and we'll return for your uh, approval for that um, contract at a later date, that would come from the fiscal year 17-18 uh, cost center budget. Uh, schedule, we hope to have uh, permitting in place uh, and the design drawings by uh, spring, I think uh, late spring, early summer 2017, with construction beginning maybe in the summer, late summer 2017. Uh, with that, we request your approval to authorize the executive officer to execute an, uh, the lease agreement. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. I have some, but does any of my colleagues have one? Rose, did you have a comment? Well, my question was just, uh, uh, either of these two projects, would, would they be available to be seen? Um, would there be sort of a, um, um, a, a ribbon cutting or some formal thing where they'll be able to be seen when they're completed? Yeah, we can I do guess that. I guess 2017, 2018 is, th this one's sooner than the other one, but, mm -hmm. and, and does, pu does the public have access? The first one sounds like it's at Grant Ranch, is that? Yes. That whole area looks very familiar to it, me. The, yeah, there's, that, that and, creek, so that's, and, that's uh, open to the public, it, right? Correct, and board member Courtney could tell you a little bit more about the trails there, but yes, I've hiked the trails yeah, there too, but yeah, so that would be really a great yeah. um, opening when you guys open that. It'll be nice to be out there and do some kind of a formal opening for that one. I don't know about out. the other one, <laughs> if that's open to the public or not. Uh, not, uh, not, not yet. Right, but, but at least the board could go see it. Or yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, Coyote Ridge, it's, that was uh, it. Those are my questions. questions. So, yeah. are there any existing toxic or contamination issues pertinent to that particular location? Uh, that's a good question. We um, no, no. Okay. Have there been in the past? Oh, up there, no. Has it been no. remediated? Uh, so. No, it's it's the clean area. It was those puffer lands. Right. So it's it's uh, the acreage that was never used for any of the manufacturing of the um, rocket fuels. Below east up, of that location? Yeah, uh, west. West yeah, of the oh, west yeah, yeah, location. Yeah. So it's um, it's the areas that have already been um, there's there was a extensive phase one done by uh, OSA and it's uh, okay. it's it's clean. Yep. These ponds are about pretty high on the watershed. They're high on the ridge. They face to the east, but they're way up above anything. Uh, that happened below there. Any other colleagues? No. I had um, two. So you mentioned Go Native would mostly be on the construction side. Um, so Butano and R RDG, is this contract include any work that they're doing? It, uh, or is that all on, is that the team that will do the whole thing, including They kind of do the whole thing. The construction, okay. uh, Go Native will assist in some of the kind of ideas and designs, preliminary de designs, and that's built into this contract. Yeah, that was my question. Yeah. Any, any of their time will flow through uh, this contract? Yes, okay. right. It okay. won't be above and beyond. The, the second contract will deal with specifically okay. the construction and the monitoring to follow. And then I think you said the, pond, the area is a, a quarter acre for each pond? You know, that's, I tried to use Google, and <laughs> we don't know. But it's, we don't, it's small. Yes, they're small. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, great. Let me see. I'd love to have a swimming pool that size, but no, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> and then the, 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 the permitting, um, the, the permitting, um, 
That's a pretty aggressive schedule unless um, you've got some secret for getting a 404 and a 401. Uh, with, uh, with the 401 or the 404, um, we have the regional general permit. That falls yeah. in, okay. And we've been working very closely with the regional board and engaging them in these projects early on. So we're, we're hopeful that we can get a 401 certification for this relatively quickly. Okay. And, and part of the, the specs on this is to engage the regional board very early in the design process. Yeah, because I, 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 I suspected that the 404 is part of our regional permit. Um, because deal habitat yeah, or? yeah, dealing with the uh, Army Corps, um, particularly with what's going to happen in Washington might be difficult as far as funding. Um, so the 401, okay, uh, and the timing, you already asked that question. Okay, uh, so are there any comments from the public? Doug, no? And no. Oh, did you have another and, and, and we have all the funding for this, right? We do. Another reason to smile since in we have little, yeah. little control yeah. of this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve to authorize the executive officer, uh, as I read in the first instance. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much, Thank Jerry. You. And welcome to the celebrating the victories. Group. Group. Celebrating yeah. Victories, right? uh, <laughs> the yes. Yeah, yeah. we got to celebrate those. <laughs> celebrate them. Celebrate them. Good, ice, good idea for the ribbon cuttings or, some, or at least a look-see. Uh, next item is the executive officer uh, report. Yes, thank you, uh, Chairperson Lazat. So first I'd want to thank uh, board member Mike Wasserman and the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors. Uh, they had a presentation with the High Speed Rail Authority on Tuesday, and Mike did a shout out and said, um, remember to meet with the Habitat Agency, and uh, we really appreciate that. So Thank you. through the chair, they, they listed whatever twenty some different organizations, and we weren't on the list. Yeah, and and wow. we have and we have met with them twice. Yes, <laughs> and, and I've talked to him on the phone a couple times, but uh, with different members of his team, um, it it is a project like uh, Walt said that we're keeping an eye on, and we are concerned about its uh, effects on uh, connectivity both in the, along the Pajaro and uh, and along. Chaco Pass as well as uh, Coyote Valley. Uh, we're going to schedule a meeting to meet with uh, Don Cameron and Kurt Gerard to express, uh, you know, some of our concerns and also to have them kind of look out for things that um, might be red flags that they can, you know, that we can engage the county on um, it, in in that review process, that CEQA EIR review process. I uh, just want to give you um, a grants update. So the Wildlife Conservation Board, some preliminary discussions we've had with them, they are going to match our Section 6 grant, which was for $2 million. Uh, the amount is to be determined, but we're cautiously optimistic it will be in that $2 million range. Um, we've also put together three grants, which are listed here. Uh, the first one is with the Department of uh, Fish and Wildlife. It's a wildlife grant program for invasive uh, species management for nearly, um, well, slightly over 69,000. Then we also put together uh, a grant through the Bureau of Reclamation, U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, through their Central Valley project for nearly a um, $1,000,000, 921,000 for new fencing both on the, the VTA Water District and the Coyote, uh, OSA Coyote Ridge uh, uh, site. And we also put a grant together for the Central Valley Project Conservation Program, also through the Bureau of Rec, for in the amount of a uh, million dollars. And it would go towards the acquisition of Richmond Ranch if we're fortunate enough to um, to acquire that property. And that uh, was submitted just a couple months ago. So um, we would know sometime next year uh, whether we get any of these grants for that matter. One of the things that was dropped from the plan um, early, uh, sort of late in the process was fish. 
It was a contentious issue between the regulators and the co-permittees and um, fish was, were dropped, um, primarily steelhead trout, um, but there was also um, uh, Chinook salmon with that accidental attraction were gonna be covered by the plan. So we're, we are revisiting that topic and it's not that we'd open up the whole plan again uh, to add fish, but we're talking about um, using our regional general permit process for any projects that would require a section seven consultation with the core um, and fall under the thresholds of the regional general permit uh, in areas for, that are fish bearing streams the regional general permit would also uh, sort of tear off of, or I should say fish would tear off of the regional general permit and provide uh, coverage for projects that are eligible for the 404 regional general permit thresholds. Uh, the meeting went extremely well with the um, NOAA fisheries we would have to develop a, a separate fee for category one streams, fish bearing. Um, the way we'd envision it, it, it would be an, uh, sort of an additional fish restoration fee on our stream fees that we already have. And then those monies would be used to restore uh, salmon, uh, salmonid habitat in, um, the Paro and Coyote Creek watersheds. Um, we had discussions with them about <laughs> the large water district projects and they, uh, as you both know. They have comments. They have comments. Yes, We're well aware. But I, I think um, the way we see the regional general permit going is that we see it evolving. Right now we have a standard that's equivalent to the nationwide standard and we do see a programmatic general permit for nationwide standard. So I, I sort of envision our regional general permit evolving into, and our 404 streamlining kind of evolving into a, um, sort of a step process where um, our current regional general permit would evolve into a programmatic general permit where the permitting would be done at the local level. And that for projects that exceed the regional general permit threshold now, they would be covered by a new regional general permit that would have higher thresholds. And we, we've had some discussions with Dr. Allen of the Corps, and we've met with Colonel Morrow of, uh, on, on several occasions. And, and that's a, a sort of our next vision for water permitting uh, for the 404. And um, at that point, I think that we can re-engage NIMS about some of the water district projects, especially some of the large flood projects that are covered by our plan and would be uh, potentially eligible for our new and improved regional general permit once, once we get to that point. So, but this is a good first step. There was a um, biological assessment prepared by ICF for fish. So there, there won't be a lot of extra work that we'll have to do to, um, have the fish uh, be covered through the regional general permit. So I'm uh, encouraged by this, and uh, this this uh, affects a lot of uh, public work projects that are in uh, salmon bearing streams. We'll be able to get fish coverage for them. And not that the NIMS stuff typically delays projects like the regional board or the or the core, but still it's one less thing that could potentially delay a project. Mm -hmm. um, on to the RGP and 401 certification update. So we met with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Morrow in October. We had some concerns about how they were implementing RGP 18. Uh, uh, we, we met with Holly Costa and the Colonel and um, they, they were very responsive to our concerns 
and about uh, assigning staff to uh, develop our in lieu fee program. And our first draft of the in lieu fee program has been perspective is complete and we're going through first round of uh, edits. Uh, once, once we're down with those edits, we will formally submit it to the, to the core uh, to be uh, reviewed under the uh, IRT process, the interagency inter review team process. And um, that involves the core, the wildlife agencies, the water boards, and uh, EPA are part of that process. So at that point, instead of having to do all these projects to gain um, acre, so for the regional uh, permit, the way it works now, we're, we're going through this interim process, mitigation instrument, we have to build projects like San Felipe and the, the projects you just approved in, in advance of um, water impacts for the 404, um, uh, I should say 404 mitigation impacts. So it's um, it's so so essentially what uh, what this will do by having an in lieu fee program instead of building projects in advance of projects needing mitigation, we won't have to do that anymore. We'll we'll be able to collect fees on projects and then as we accumulate enough money through the 404 permitting process, then we can implement projects um, versus what we're doing now, which is building them in advance of the, the, the impacts, which can be challenging. And if we can't keep up with, uh, uh, let's say a bunch of uh, water district and county bridge projects come in and um, we don't have enough credit value built uh, either under construction or constructed, then those projects would be delayed via the regional general permit or have to pay ex additional mitigation fees to uh, offset what they call temporal loss. So um, by developing an in lieu fee program, we just, it'll, it'll be essentially like the habitat plan uh, endangered species permitting uh, fees, the way we collect them and then we go out and buy land and restore the land. We also met with um, both regional water quality boards in October. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic that we might be able to get some sort of 401 certification for most of the activities uh, identified in our regional general permit. Um, it would be a game changer because this is uh, especially in the San Francisco district. Uh, there's a lot of contentious issues between the regional boards and project proponents and and we're hoping that we can play a constructive role by streamlining that process and having them tear off of uh, our 404 process we had a very good meeting with them um, i can't promise anything but at least we're uh, making headway and no other hcp nccp in the state currently uh, has a, a 401 certification so if we can get it It'd be a big deal. Uh, update on Claro restoration. Uh, we're hoping that construction will be completed tomorrow and uh, keep your fingers crossed before the rains on the weekend. And it'll be our first completed uh, restoration project done, um, done within budget. Well, Great. Thank you. Update on the city of Mountain View as a potential co-permittee. I had a conversation with uh, some of the senior management they had a lot of questions like, what's the advantage of being part of this process? Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm biased. I think these things work really well. Uh, their other big concern is burrowing owls and the potential of it being uh, a state listed species. There's burrowing owls out at their landfill in the Bay Shore area. So um, they potentially could join as a co-permittee. We'd have to amend the plan to do that, but that there's other things that are also pending that may lead to us the need to amend the plan. So um, the only negative I felt for them was that there would be a cost associated with them wanting to become a co-permittee in terms of uh, 
uh, helping to pay for uh, a plan amendment process. Um, I, I think it was, a, in, in my opinion, it would be a positive for them to join, but it's something that their council and their senior staff will have to figure out whether it's something that makes sense for them or not. And um, obviously the co-permittees would be involved in determining whether you would want Mountain View to become um, a member of our, of our family here or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my decision. It would be the decision of the, the county, county and uh, the special districts and all the city councils. Yeah. I just had a question on that. Did, yes. did, did they seek out, they sought you out to yes. find out if they could be part of it? Yes. Do we have other cities that are uh, that are in the same position asking N to be part no, of it? No, no, not, not that I'm aware of. Um, Santa Clara has some issues, the city of Santa Clara, related to their city place project and impacts on owls and, um, and nitrogen. But I think it's so far along and it's uh, approval process that joining us at this point in time probably wouldn't make sense for them. And I don't think they've ever expressed much of an interest in, you know, becoming uh, part of part of this process. I, I guess my, um, my first take would be having any other co-permittee, whoever they are, and you mentioned a few problems with, with Mountain View, um, how much uh, more effort on your staff Mm -hmm. For example, yes, you know, I, I know there. I vaguely remember, but there was a lot about how each city put in so much money uh -huh. and mm -hmm. all of this stuff and all the setup mm -hmm. fees, and to bring in someone, whoever they may be, mm -hmm. whatever city, um, you'd have to evaluate that so that they would pay their fair share. That's kind of how I would take it, especially mm -hmm. if it's something that you already know you have problems coming, that your staff in the future would have a lot of work ahead of you because of it. It would be up to this board, right? Right. It would ultimately be here, but you would yes. want the data to back that up. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I. Uh, that's a concern I have. These uh, amendment processes, Coachella Valley went through it. They can take several years. It doesn't make sense. It's not like a general plan, which you're allowed so many amendments to a general plan per state law uh, per year. This is, it. it would involve whether the, uh, water district wanted to add their SMP program. It would involve some amendments that the county is interested in um, related to impacts of the plan on rural projects. There's several things that would, th this in of itself, we, we probably wouldn't do it, but it, but if we're combining it with all these other That's issues, oh, implementation no, no. challenges, then yes. And we'd have to prorate what their cost would be for sure. I I couldn't tell you what that would be, but I can I can certainly talk to um, David Zippen at ICF and get a handle on that and and report back to you if if and when it becomes an issue. Yep. What else? Thank you. And you know, you, you get to a certain point, Edmund. You've you've got your staff now, and you're managing what we've set up originally. If you bring in another entity, such, such as Kat was just mentioning, and that causes the need for another staff person, mm -hmm. you don't want to get into that prorating mm -hmm. where each of the organizations here has to put in more money and the organization joining might be putting in 5% based on a per capita or 10% or something like that. Um, if you do it on acreage or water district size or, or whatever. so I. I just want us to be very, very careful. We had an original intent and reason for setting up the Habitat Conservation Authority. Mm -hmm. It was after the development that had taken place in the North County, if you will, San Jose and North. Mm -hmm. And it was for this remaining agricultural open space area that exists here. Mm -hmm. And to expedite agencies that have interests in, I'll say from, <coughs> she's new at this, so just please excuse her. Um, like the uh, <laughs> Come on, I, I just first meeting. please tread very carefully on that. Um, at the SVRIA, we welcomed in the VTA, and we welcomed, and they each paid their fair share, and it reduced the cost to everybody else. So it, we just need to be very careful going forward. This was set up for a reason. It's in its first couple of years. <clears throat> it's its first restoration project. It's 
in, in your budget, we need to get certain grants in order to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, you made that very clear in your budget proposal, not in your bud budget presentation. Mm -hmm. If we don't get those monies, we're in trouble. So mm -hmm. I just am concerned about, mm -hmm. just please be careful. I will. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, continue it. So land acquisition update. So letters of intent um, went out to El Toro and Richmond owners. Uh, we're awaiting response from both. We're gonna have a, um, a pretty robust discussion about Richmond in closed session. So I'll address that there. Uh, Caltrans Pacheco Creek property, which is along 152. Um, they are gonna, I've been assured they were still gonna donate it to us. <laughs> it hasn't gone to the uh, California Transportation Commission yet. So um, I, it was supposed to go in July, then it was supposed to happen in the fall, I think October. Uh, I believe it's been now continued to their agenda next, uh, next year, so their next meeting next year, the CTC. So once that happens, I'll, I'll I'll be you'll you'll be the first to find out and I'll report it to you <laughs> madam chair may I ask a question sure. yes thank you um, is there anything to infer from all the delaying <laughs> are you still confident I think it yes I'm I from from what I I, I think it's just a low priority for the CTC um, their senior staff in this region was supportive of transferring that property to us um, it's uh, provides some um, restoration opportunities for us and connectivity as Walt had mentioned. So we're, we're in favor of receiving it. Yeah, if they, if they decide to pull out, so be it. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you, thank you, Manager. Um, let's see, the Claro Park <coughs> Conservation Easement, we had a really good meeting with the county park staff and the wildlife agencies yesterday. Um, both myself and uh, the county park, uh, uh, county council and county park uh, managers made it clear to the wildlife agencies that uh, what the easement needs to be compatible with the with the park charter fund and and the and and sort of the enabling legislation and rules that sort of guide the county and county parks and how they spend that money and and. Uh, that recreation is an important component of 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 that of of how those monies are spent. Uh, the wildlife agencies got got the message. Probably, what's going to happen is we have to develop a, a, a separate uh, conservation template for the enrollment of county park lands that that recognize the the preeminence of the or early. I should say both uh, things being co-equals. Both. Uh, uh, species preservation and the the goals and objectives of the, the park charter so uh, it's probably going to take longer than we had thought and had hoped but uh, that seems to be how things are done with these uh, conservation plans <laughs> so um, the Coyote Ridge management agreement negotiations with OSA were successfully concluded and um, they took it to their board last week um, I'm assuming I should have checked with Andrea McKenzie, but I'm assuming it got approved by their by their board. And this is uh, uh, there's no dollar amount yet assigned to this uh, agreement. We will come back to the board on any big ticket items that they want us to uh, help share and pay for. So, uh, and I'm um, going to hold the line on that because they. They want us to spend a lot of money on roads, and I'm I'm, nece I'm not necessarily on board with that. So, but I do think there's a, a, a lot of opportunities to work collaboratively with them on um, doing um, uh, grazing infrastructure improvements, uh, road maintenance, and uh, working collaboratively on uh, conservation out there. So. Um, just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, we're on the payroll process, you know, as you remember what we talked about in closed session. So we're going to do a, a new in-house payroll processing system, which is tearing off of our Black Mountain software, which is what we use for all the uh, accounting, tracking, and, uh, and accounting reporting now. 
and this will significantly streamline the process of payroll entry and reporting. So essentially, we're going to be doing our own payroll now versus using one of the private payroll companies, which we had lots of problems with, unfortunately. Uh, so um, our uh, first uh, payroll will launch on December 9th, 2016. So we're going into the brave new world of doing our own payroll. So <laughs> um, Per uh, board direction, we've set up a 401k um, safe harbor plan, and that would, uh, the plan, will, our current 401k plan will be amended beginning the first of next year to allow for a safe harbor non-electric contribution equal to 5% of the eligible participant's compensation. You'll see listed there what is defined as an eligible participant. And, um, the non-elective contribution percentage will be added to the budget and noted as a budget change discussed during our mid-year budget review presentation to the governing board. Um, also, per our last meeting, uh, uh, board direction was to set up a 501c3 uh, for the, the, the goal of an, uh, in investing our endowment with the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. We've started that process. Um, Valerie Armento has been um, doing the research on that. And, and these are sort of, the, I won't go over all this. You can, you can read it, but there's several steps that we got to start to do. And we've decided to call ourselves, unless uh, I guess I'm open to other names too that we would call our nonprofit Friends of the Santa Clara Valley Habitat Agency. But if, um, if you all have some other ideas on that, we're open to that. Good name. It's fine. It works for me. <laughs> and um, that's, uh, that's all I have to um, uh, utter report. Thank you. Mr. Wasserman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, question for you, please, mm -hmm. Edmund. And I've got Vice Mayor Herrera here. As far as San Jose's appointee mm -hmm. to this committee, San yes. Jose presence here, a quorum here, the necessity, I don't know, and perhaps through the chair, through, through Rose, mm -hmm. has a new person been appointed to replace you? Is there somebody, do you know what's going on as far as San Jose being at these meetings? Well, I'll be here until the end of the year, and then there'll be someone that will be appointed. Um, we're still processing the election, and we don't even know who's going to be seated fully in our council. So the mayor usually makes those appointments at the end of the year and the person will start in January. And you should, you'll probably have, um, you'll have at least two people because one will be the regular member and you'll have an alternate. So there'll be two people from San Jose. And I'll, and I'll be talking to the mayor about that because he'll be asking me for recommendations on various things. Super, thank you. So thank you will you. have people here. That's what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, and I've, in January. Okay, and I've reached out to the mayor's office just to let you all know for a replacement for Jason Rogers also. Good. And they're, it's on their radar. We're, we're meeting with Harry Friedis, am I saying that Harry name correctly? Friedis. Yeah, on, on Monday. And, that, and that'll be one of the things we talked to him about too. And um, we, you know, Rose has been a real stalwart of both our boards. So we, we, we hope we get another person as uh, dedicated and diligent as, as you. Thank you. I'll make sure you do because I'll, I'll take that personally to be working with the mayor and reaching out to various council members to see who's going to, who really wants to uh, be, be part of this. So I'm sure we will get you some good folks. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Great. All right, then moving on, uh, looks like we're going to adjourn to closed session. Uh, that room back there? Yes. And the, the people. Yeah, okay. that, one's in, here. that one's in uh, use, I believe. Public comment. Oh, uh, is there any public comment before we go into closed session? Nope.